welcome to our new episode of tarang today we have with us palak mago who is a regional head at z entertainment she's a brand solutions and sales enthusiast with over 15 year of work experience in leading media organization with likes of z tv sony network she enjoys conceptualizing and executing innovative integrating concepts with various media platforms and has worked extensively with consumer brands and advertising and media agencies she loves to read and write this is a welcome ma'am hey thank you so much shashank for that kind introduction pleasure to be here uh, so ma'am i'll begin with my first question so ma'am we would like to start off by knowing what it does to be a content specialist in such a dynamic media environment oh uh, well i think the best part about the creative field is the fact that there are no set rules and uh, you know creativity really knows no bounds therefore we don't really you know sort of follow any uh, set pattern or guidelines per se but yes one important thing as a specialist i personally feel is to be able to develop the ability to you know kind of understand and figure out what really qualifies to be called as a good piece of content in the first place you know especially in a cluttered environment so that sense of being able to identify that core is i think extremely critical and you know so while they say that content is every communication you make i always uh, try and explain that with a similar but a very different statement which is content is everything but not everything is content i repeat content is everything but not everything is content yeah so if you analyze this well you will realize that there is a huge difference between the two also i think uh, the art of being a passionate storyteller really goes a long way in addition to having the desire to learn more about their brands uh, their positioning what do they actually stand for because you know that is what really helps the specialist to carve out and you know think through new innovative ideas that can actually help the brands connect with their audience and you know strike that emotional chord so i guess uh, you know these are broadly few key areas any content enthusiast can actually focus on mm-hmm. if they really intend to you know kind of make this their core forte in the times to come Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, ma'am, you talked about brands. So, ma'am, what is your idea on brand engagements across media platforms? Okay. Um, see, brand engagement is one of the most critical aspects of the overall marketing strategies today. Yeah, and when I say this, I essentially mean that it actually goes beyond mm-hmm. just the brand awareness. Mm-hmm. so therefore we see that you know content marketing today has actually become the backbone of the overall business strategies so to say and that cuts across all verticals and industries so you know and it further bifurcates into things like branded content content syndication content repurposing etc and it's actually a continuous process mm-hmm. and i think that is what it's something like you know running a marathon right wherein the brands constantly have to think through new unique and innovative ways and activities to establish that connect with their end customers and also parallelly carve a niche for themselves along with creating that disruption and you know all this club together and done well if at all it actually helps in gaining the confidence and loyalty of the target audience because as this point in time is when they feel involved with the brand and it does have a positive rub off effect on the business in the longer term and you know in terms of improving customer engagement retaining the existing customer base and turn the prospects into future customers so yeah no that is um, that is very uh, important turning prospects into future customer we are living in quite dynamic environment particularly so can you give um, our audience some insight on what goes into customizing content and solution mm-hmm. across multimedia such as tv radio print and digital oh right see today we guys are actually you know operating in an environment wherein we have a plethora of platforms available to us and that somehow you know helps up scale up things 
amplify things, you know, because every platform has its own USP and its advantage as well. So I think, you know, uh, gone are those days when you were actually dependent on just the traditional media. And when I say traditional media, essentially one could think of say print, you will probably think through, you know, newspapers and magazines at best. Uh, electronic, people will say, okay, radio, television. But today, even in television, I would say the television space is actually also, you know, we've gone far and beyond. The number of genres have increased. True. And there is an emergence of various new asset and, you know, new media vehicles also that have come up. Digital, for example, you know, social mm -hmm. media has come up in a big way. So I personally feel, and you know, content today plays an important role for all the brands, right? In all the industries per se. So therefore, I think 360 degree campaigns are always designed, keeping in mind the uh, communication objective and requirements of the brand, right? At large. So, and then accordingly, we go about selection of media mix. And, you know, and then we look at what will actually be the best combination. And you also have ATL plus BTL, which is above the line and below the line. So what happens is on-air activations plus the on-ground activations club together, they help you, you know, get a lot of traction. And also it helps you, you know, kind of uh, reach out to the target audience at multiple levels. And I think that is something which is extremely, extremely important, right? And see, yes. as I said earlier on, every medium has its own advantage, right? So, and then accordingly, depending on the scalability that one intends to achieve from a brand standpoint, we go about the overall customization. That is the point in time when we decide the primary mediums, the secondary mediums, uh, the amplifiers, so to say. And then we, along with, you know, we probably club it with the apt short formats as well as long formats. So a healthy mix typically helps to, you know, kind of customize a good plan for any brand to achieve the scalability and the brand objective at the end of the day. Okay. So for uh, every, for different brands, we, you, you try to customize differently. You try to um, have a different mix of platforms and then try to perform that. That's very great. Oh yes, absolutely. Yes. See, actually what happens is every industry functions in a very different manner, right? So what I design or what we think through for, let's say an auto category might not be relevant enough for an FMCG or a consumer durable. <laughs> because everybody is chasing a different you know, uh, target. Everybody has a different objective to achieve. And also the target audience that you're actually you know, reaching out to is very different across verticals. So one size does not really fit all, you know, if that kind of makes sense. And therefore you need to keep evolving and we need to churn out ideas which are relevant to the category that we are actually looking at. Mm -hmm. So innovation, yeah. this is something very important that every time you have to improvise, you have to think differently for different industry. So I'm coming to my fourth question. Ma'am, you have worked extensively across media play organizations. So could you share some transformations or disruptions you have witnessed over the year in your career? Oh, I think uh, that's a lovely question, actually. Well, yes, I think uh, when you talk about the entire media landscape, I definitely think it has undergone a huge paradigm shift over the last two or three decades, right? And as I just mentioned in the previous question as well, you know, like earlier on, people used to think about traditional media, you know, so your thought typically was just up till print, uh, radio, television, so to say. But today, you know, I feel there's a plethora of new age media platforms that have emerged. And I'll take probably a moment to talk about specifically about within the digital space, I'll talk about the OTT platform, which is over the top. And therefore, I think players like your Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, Hotstar, Boot, Z5, etc. Though they need no introduction, you know, and especially during the lockdown, we have seen a huge, huge spike. And I think this particular platform has really, you know, kind of changed the dynamics. They have changed the way linear TV viewership has actually shifted to this particular platform. And one very interesting fact I like to highlight is the fact that, you know, see earlier on now cinema industry has been a big, big hit during this lockdown. So theaters are shut. You really have not seen any movie release, theatrical release, so to say, right? 
but look at it today you have seen uh, movies across all big labels that are actually using ott to release the movie platform which means the audience is there but it's just that you've shifted your primary platform which was a cinema theater earlier to be ott platforms absolutely and therefore we and you know trust me they are actually there's a huge traction there people are absolutely fine you know because the viewing space is absolutely up to your time there is no fixed viewership you can log in log off at any given point in time right so i think that is a big big plus and uh, and of course digital needless to say along with the social media club together we see that you know uh, they are actually taking away a decent share in the overall marketing pie spend of clients and because of this i personally feel content is seen in a very very different light today mm-hmm. you know and maybe one primary reason for that is because you know what has happened is clients now feel that plain vanilla advertising will not really work in a way when they try to say that is essentially saying that they can't excite the customers any longer and the reason for that is uh, the audience today is really really evolved right so therefore they exactly know that where the go to place has to be very very clear for them and that all depends on how are you able to engage with them at every possible level and you've got to connect with them at somewhere you know that emotional cord is very very important right so i think uh, it's it's imperative for every brand to kind of you know stay connected make your audience feel a part of your brand your story and once you're managing that well i think it definitely helps in an organic growth along with establishing the trust and uh, loyalty in the longer run definitely yeah. ma'am even ma'am i was um, reading mckinsey's report on how the customer behavior has completely changed particularly after or during the covid and um, mm-hmm. how much digital literacy has increased so my next question to you how media houses um looking to provide more innovative custom content to its current audience as well as to grab these audiences more audiences increase in their bases okay see uh as media houses i think one of the biggest assets that we guys have you know is a huge pool of content available with us across genres so you know i think and that typically helps across all the markets that you could possibly think of right from national presence to probably regional presence to even niche yeah and nowadays you have the hd feeds as well so somebody if you really want to just go deep down you know and you want to filter it even further so you have a standard feed and you have a high definition feed as well so accordingly there is a clear cut demarcation now having said that see you know so there are two ways to look about it because i already have a huge uh, plethora of you know content available across genres either we marry the client's objective the communication objective with the existing piece that we already have or the other way to look at it is that we start from the scratch and we look at end to end solutions wherein what we do is you know uh, every media tri- house is actually trying its level best to leverage all the assets that they have right and then design robust campaigns for brands that can help them create awareness of the brand along with the top of mind recall because i think that is a very very critical aspect of any activity that any client wants to do at the end of the day right so creative integrations and you know innovations the out of box innovations are being thought of and uh, interestingly what happens is we guys all have a lot of flagship products also that we have so a lot of clients use that as a launch pad and organically weave the brands in the existing storylines we also make epic stories now epic stories means you literally making the brand the key protagonist of the story so it is ultimately the artist take a little back seat and the brand take over you know and that is essentially a very very critical thing and it's a very interesting thing as well you know how you typically you know weave in the brands organically and it looks like they were forever a part of the original content yeah and i think uh, like this particular thing branded content has really helped all the brands you know have mm-hmm. with the unique disruptions there are a lot of examples you know where in people have actually managed to create disruptions uh done things for the very very first time 
you know, by creating uh, disruption across platforms, multiple platforms, right? And I think it has its own merit and it helps in the overall growth and scalability of the brand. Yes, ma'am. Um, absolutely. I can get that from you. Okay, ma'am, uh, coming back to your college life, coming back to your NLM on IFT. So, ma'am, what... Um, I'm really looking forward to that this question. Ma'am, we would like to love to hear about some of your fond memories as well as some crucial learning movements while at IFT. Oh, I think uh, it was one of the best times for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, I think we like everybody. I'm sure like you guys also. College life is always fun, right? And I think I typically, because I've done the executive course, so the best part about the whole course was the fact that, you know, I really enjoyed the group activities because, and the interaction with people from mm -hmm. across industries. So that, that sort of really, you know, sort of helped me gain a fair understanding of how other businesses function, their processes, uh, their strengths, their challenges, their logistics, etc. right? And I think as far as the crucial learning is concerned, uh, I would typically say it really helped me with a better sense of time management. Yeah. And, and somewhere it really gave me an in-depth understanding of the Pareto's 80-20 principle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, you know, so I think, you know, the ability to identify that crucial 20% that eventually gives you 80% of the result or the output as desired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it sort of really helped me because, you know, uh, managing work plus studies was quite a Herculean task in itself, to be very yeah. honest, right? Yes, so I think it, it really helped me increase my overall efficiency. Mm -hmm. Maybe because, you know, uh, it helped a lot to focus on the right things and probably the most important things. Because, you know, what typically happens is uh, you read a lot, you have an access to, we are, in fact, we are overloaded with information these days. Let me put it that way. So in this particular environment, it's very important to analyze those critical things which will eventually help you. So I think... The uh, amount of prioritization. Oh, yes, absolutely. So I think it really helped me, all these things put together, they really helped me plan my life better, both personally and professionally. So I think this was a big, big learning and... Uh, the sooner you learn it, the better it is, I guess. Yes, ma'am. Definitely, ma'am. Uh, we can feel that. We can <laughs> right now. I'm sure. Student, student life seems good, but for us, it's like <laughs> we are student right now. I hope, uh, and we are enjoying, obviously. Um, so, ma'am, the final question I have for you is that: What advice uh, would you like to give to the budding marketing enthusiasts like us, um, currently at IFT? Um, and at this stage of our education, how should they better their skill sets? See, I think at the outset, I would say uh, simply enjoy this phase, first of all, as much as you can, you know, before you guys really step into the next phase of your life, which is the corporate life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and always remember that as and when you enter that new phase of your life, right? Just ensure you try and learn things at the grassroots level first. Don't be in a hurry to just grow up the ladder using, you know, shortcuts if available, right? And I think that is what most people try and do. And for that, let me assure you, you will have to inculcate a lot of patience. And as a marketer, always remember the golden rule is that one size does not fit all. As I just explained, what works for auto might not work for an FMCP and likewise for other industries as well, right? So just be flexible and I think most importantly, be open to ideas. Yeah, that is very, very critical. Do not be scared to experiment with new things. Yeah, because I think to stand out or create something phenomenal, one needs to take risk. You know, so that risk-taking appetite is very, very essential and do not follow the herd mentality, which I think most of the people tend to do, right? And just bear in mind that uh, failure is, you know, as much an important aspect in life to grow and evolve, right? Because, and don't get bogged down because challenges are going to come your way. Just be fearless, face them, and just remember that they are pretty much the part and parcel of your life. And I think that will really help you grow both personally as well as professionally you know and uh, just 
say you just enjoy what you do i think that's really really important and uh, if you have a sound understanding about what you do mm-hmm. and you're passionate about what you do most importantly success will eventually be on your side sooner or later right so i think on this note uh, with all you budding uh, you know youngsters coming on to the corporate side joining our bandwagon pretty soon i guess you know so i wish each one of you a very bright and a stupendous career ahead and all the best and do well thank you thank you thank you very much ma'am very much ma'am and uh, the thing that uh, and not to consider concludes uh, the thing that you said about flexibility enjoying life be open to ideas and um, increasing the appetite of risk taking is something very essential for our growth and uh, for the growth of country as well thank you very much it was a wonderful talk uh, it was wonderful talking to you ma'am and uh, thank you sir okay guys you can subscribe our channel as well <laughs> okay. right thank you ma'am